Good afternoon everyone, I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this short and easy video on the calculus of free fall. We know what free fall is, an object that falls freely under the influence of gravity, assuming that air resistance is negligible, well that object is experiencing free fall because it is affected only by the force of gravity. How do we go about understanding free fall in terms of calculus? It's actually very easy and it falls very well within the realm of the previous two videos we've looked at. You know very quickly acceleration with respect to time. If you do its integral, you're going to get the velocity function, right? Acceleration function goes to velocity function by means of an integral procedure. If you do the integral of this, you're going to end up at the position function. Likewise, you can easily go this way in terms of derivative procedure. You can think of velocity as also the first order derivative we're looking here with regards to the lower loop here, with regards to derivatives, just for discussion's sake. You can think of velocity as a first order of the position function. You can think of acceleration as a second order derivative of the position function because it undergoes through derivative procedures from position to get to acceleration. And you can also think of this as the first order derivative with respect to velocity. Because from the velocity to go to the acceleration, you're doing a single derivative procedure. So it's a first order derivative with respect to the velocity. Anyhow, our focus here is on these upper upper parts here, the integral procedure. You can easily come to this formula. You know you've seen this formula. The position of an object with respect to time is equal to half gt square. It's a free fall equation. Half times the gravitational acceleration constant times t square. You know when you're looking at things with regards to vectors, up and down, right and left. Any object which is falling down is usually given a negative sign. You can think of this as minus one over two gt square. G over here, the gravitational constant is, is synonymous in this equation to the acceleration, which is always measured in meters per second square, right? And we also know that here in this instance, 9.8 meters per second square represents the acceleration with the gravitational effect. The gravity, gives us an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second square. What we want to look at in this equation is this, the calculus of free fall, which is given by this equation. I won't bring in the minuses, but we should always assume that a minus is given with regards to your answers, especially when you're looking at a vector or movement down an up and down axis where you're looking at a net movement down, you have a minus over there. In this video, to stay true and consistent with the terminology and the letters I've been using, Instead of using G for the acceleration of gravity, I'll just use the letter A. If you know acceleration with respect to time for gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second square, and I'm not bringing in the minus, though you would think of things in terms of minus, because the movement of free fall would be downwards. From a higher altitude down towards the surface of the earth, you'll have a negative in terms of the movement. It will be downwards. If you take the integral of this, you'll arrive at the velocity function, and you know this right here in terms of the in integral is not hard. You're thinking of something in 9.8 t to the power of zero. When you do the integral of this with respect to dt, you're doing 9.8 t to the zero plus one divided by zero plus one, and what do you get? You get 9.8 t meters per second. So now we have the velocity function already done. It's very easy. If you do now the integral of this velocity function to arrive at the position function, to do the integral of this, you know you're thinking of something in terms of the integral of a basic polynomial. You do n plus one divided by n plus one. And you know you're talking about a basic polynomial. So we're looking at something which looks like 9.8 t to the power of one. You're gonna do one plus one over here divided by one plus one. What do we get here? we get 9.8 t square over 2 which you can easily simplify because 9.8 divided by 2 gives you something you get 4.9 t square and meters so now we've come up with in a matter of basically one or two minutes three functions or equations that you will see in kinematics or the study of motion one is this right here the acceleration of an object in free fall, that's a function right there, 9.8 meters per second square. Here's the other one, the velocity function, 9.8 t, or you can say 9.8 x meters per second square, and the position function right here, 9.8 t square over two, or you can say 4.9 t square meters. Now, how do we go about actually applying this? So now let's apply some of this knowledge at work. We know we have the acceleration function, the velocity, and the position function. And the question is this, an object is in free fall. 
what is its velocity at 5 seconds and what is its position after 10 seconds. The fact that you know now how to derive those three functions makes all of this very easy. When you're talking about velocity at 5 seconds, you know you're looking at the velocity function. You're essentially looking at the velocity at time 5 seconds and all you have to do is position everything into this equation 9.8 times 5 and you would easily get to your answer it would be 49 meters per second so an object which has an initial acceleration 9.8 meters per second square after 5 seconds will have in free fall a velocity of 49 meters per second and now for this what is its position after 10 seconds you know we're talking about positions you have to look at the second function the position at time t you're basically looking at this you're going to do 4.9 times 10 square and you can easily run that through your calculator 490 meters now if you were really looking at free fall you know you'd be looking at a downward displacement you would really present your answer as 490 meters because it originally started from a point to zero and it's going downward so you're minus 490 meters down from your original point 490 meters down from your original point and these are one of those instances where both the displacement and the distance values would be the same they would be equal to each other because if you were to suppose to graph this and you would see the displacement and the distance measurements would be the same you would see an effect something like this you have minus 4.9 t square and you're technically looking at the area below the curve if this right here represents the curve technically or literally below it would be from let's just say zero to whatever interval we'll call that x you're looking at this area right over here all of this area below it it's not really below it; it's above it but i'm just literally talking in all of this instance you'd always see that there would be no net area effect the only area would be always a cumulative area hence displacement and distance would always be the same likewise if you were to look at everything here in terms of a positive 4.90 square then we can just keep it from zero up to whatever time interval you would always have an area below the curve which would be accumulated there would never be a net area there would never be a net effect between a positive or a minus you would never have to bring absolute values into place you'd always have a single area factor play out in terms of the area below the curve and hence in all of these instances these two values will be the same what are your this value is represents both of these values now for this video this is my last question that i want to show you this question with two parts basic message over here is that objects in free fall understood by means of calculus by means of this loop which we have this integral loop from acceleration you're going to velocity to position by means of an integral procedure is actually very easy to understand when you think of everything in terms of integral calculus we have an object which is dropped from a 200 meter cliff how long does it take to hit the ground we have a position given and we have the time to find and you have to basically look at everything with regards to this equation is equal to 4.9 t square we know the position of the object is from 200 that represents your s of t is equal to 4.9 t square you just have to solve for t take 4.9 on the other side divide it from 200 and take the square root and you get 6.388 seconds so from a 200 meter cliff it will take 6.388 seconds for this object to hit the ground given that the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared which is the acceleration due to gravity what about this question number b what is the velocity at the time of impact well you would have had to determine the time first to get the velocity because then you would look at the second equation here velocity function is equal to 9.8 t now that we know t we just have to do the input of that 6.388 into this function right here which is 9.8 times that and that will give you the speed of the object before impact and it would be 62.6 meters per second and not too hard but quite interesting so remember in this video we're just showing you if you are given the acceleration of an object and here we're talking about free fall you can do its integral and you can arrive at the velocity function and you can do the integral of that and arrive at the position function once you have all of these three equations shown you can easily start answering questions of this type but in this video we also showed you something which you might have taken for granted that starting with 9.8 we know we have 9.8 t which is an equation of velocity of an object at free fall this is an equation for a acceleration of an object at free fall and then from here you can get 9.8 t square over 2 which is an equation 
for determining the position of an object in free fall. And then you would normally put a minus over here because these free fall objects are normally have vectors pointed downwards. You could put a minus here as well too. All right, but in this video, we're keeping everything positive and we weren't focusing too much on the direction of these objects. But keep in mind, generally, your equation would be here, would be S is equal to minus one over two G T squared, which is the equation of physics. Here, the G is synonymous with acceleration, which I was using as 9.8. 9.8 divided by two gives you that 4.9, which I have over there. Minus just indicates that the vector is pointed downwards. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.